Thanks a lot, Nick. Um, just to explain quickly um, why exactly I'm here, it might seem a little confusing for a meeting, it's about housing rights uh, to have a speaker from a Traveller Solidarity Network here. Hopefully it'll become clear quite soon, because actually a lot of what we're working against as a network uh, are the sorts of things that are coming in in the localism bill uh, under one of the other five headings that's not um, about social housing, but it's about planning law. Um, just quickly, uh, the Traveller Solidarity Network, as many of you might know, is a network that came out of the mobilisations that happened around Dale Farm over six months ago. Uh, we support a number of traveller sites um, around the country, both Irish Traveller, Roman Gypsy, New Aroma, who you know, have maybe come over uh, from Eastern Europe in the last 20 or 30 years, but are actually part of the same pan-European migration of Romani people that, that came from northern India, you know, a thousand years ago or something like that. So we, we, we actually act in solidarity with quite a few quite distinct communities, and we're, we're not trying to homogenise them through that. It's more that we see them as experiencing quite similar forms of oppression, uh, and in our politics, people who are being oppressed in similar ways should start fighting back in similar ways. And that, that's part of the reason that we're here um, to, to speak. And you know, part of the reason that Mick's been coming to our meetings in London as well, because you know, evictions are evictions, whether they're happening to travellers or council tenants or people in the private sector. Um, so, I mean, in fact, the communities that we're supporting are, are affected by the localism bill, for example, in, in two different ways, because we're supporting Roma, who are often being slashed off housing benefit. I did a meeting in Birmingham a, a couple of weeks ago, uh, and um, off the back of that, just got a call a couple of days ago from a friend there, a Czech Roma activist, who's recently come from working underground in Czech Republic because of the levels of racism there. Uh, actually, he's got 30 people living in his house now because they've all just been slashed off housing benefit and have been told they, they shouldn't be in the country and they should leave. So we've got those sorts of issues, uh, which we're often going to map onto the sorts of issues that, that many other people um, you know, are facing throughout social housing. Uh, but then also the fight for sites, and that's something I'm going to explain a little bit more about now, because it's something that's maybe a little bit more outside of people's ken. Um, so, um, just to quickly backtrack and get a little bit of history and provision before I talk about the localism bill. Um, as many of you will know, obviously, the persecution that Irish travellers and Romani gypsies have experienced has been pretty near relentless for the last few centuries. Um, but it's really ramped up in the last, last few years and, and the last decades as well. After the, after the war, um, land use in the UK changed really significantly to agricultural use primarily. And that's when they brought in uh, what was called the Town and Country Planning Act. Some of you might know about it in, in 1947. Essentially what that act did was it forbade people to live in a place unless you had the council's permission. That's what we call planning permission now in, in, in general conversation. But that was the, the first time when you're actually banned from just buying somewhere and living there. And you, you need planning permission just to live somewhere, not, not even to build something there, but to live there. And that, that really has been key to the sorts of oppression that travellers have faced over the last 50 years, because then they get their temporary stopping places taken away, the places that they overwinter. Lots of travellers stay somewhere for the winter and then will travel throughout the summer. Um, so, you know, through a succession of different legislation throughout the 50s and 60s, all that happened until we finally got uh, the first decent bit of legislation. Uh, and, and all it really did, it was in 1968, and all it did was say travellers should, you know, have access to social housing just like anyone else. Just like anyone else can go onto council housing register, travellers should get sites and councils should provide sites. And that was taken away in 1994. Uh, and although we had a slight advance, uh, with something John Prescott issued actually in 2006. What, what's happened in the localism bill now with the abolishment of something, it's a bit of a mouthful, called regional spatial strategies. Regional spatial strategies, I'm sure plenty of you know about them. They're essentially like uh, regional kind of centralised economic and uh, development models that have targets for you know how many houses should be built in an area, uh, how many gypsy and Roman... Roman Roni Gypsy and Traveller sites, uh, and all this sort of thing. What we've just got to, both with the localism bill and then with the National Planning Policy Framework that came out a couple of days ago, which has 
uh, another document appended to it that's, that's about uh, planning provision for travellers, uh, is that actually all of this is going to happen through a purely local council decision-making body. Uh, now, you know, I'm sure lots of you are aware about the very seductive discourse <coughs> that local village shrouded in of decentralisation <coughs> and community empowerment and, you know, making, you're letting communities make the decisions. Really, uh, hopefully no one's under any illusions about that sort of rhetoric. What, what we're left with is councils creating their own targets for the amount of pitches that they have to create. Already in the last year, since people knew that the localism act was coming in, councils have slashed their targets. Um, it, it essentially contributes to this, the sort of atmosphere that we got um, with Tony Ball, the leader of Basildon Council around Dale Farm, saying there are too many travellers in Basildon, why can't, and too many in Essex even, why can't another county take some? Uh, and, you know, pushing this problem around uh, to try and find someone else to, to make that provision. I mean, as an aside, clearly you couldn't say that about any other ethnic minority. Uh, and I, I don't want to divorce this form of racism against travellers uh, from, from the others because uh, I see it as intrinsically linked to them, but I think it's emblematic of how travellers are treated that you could possibly say. Yeah, you can say there are too many Asian people in Bradford, why don't they move to you know, Wales or something, could you? Um, uh, at any rate, qu just quickly, what, what the Localism Bill actually does uh, is it both <coughs> makes it more difficult for travellers to get planning permission and it makes it easier to enforce against travellers who don't have planning permission. So that we get into a situation where if you are, are an Irish traveller and you've just been evicted from your land, uh, this is the, the way that most of these battles over planning permission actually develop, is someone's just been evicted and they've got to go somewhere. Um, so you've been evicted off your land, you, you've, you have some land that you own and you move to that land and you apply for planning permission. That's automatically a retrospective application because you're living there and then you're asking if you can live there. The, through the localism bill, which is now just, although it was passed in November, some of it didn't come into effect until April. Um, and in, in the next few days, uh, this is taking effect whereby people can be evicted from that land that they own before their planning permission, the planning application, has even been heard. And this is, this is just a couple of sentences that are in there in the localism bill, but it's why part of the reason that the localism bill was so key to how the cycle of evictions is going to increase for travellers throughout this country. Um, and it's, it's a key point to understand. Um, so, re really, I guess the last thing I want to say uh, on localism before I move on is just that what we had to move from was a situation where councils were slowly, perhaps, <coughs> identifying sites to actually allocating sites, to finding places for travellers to be able to live. Now, what we've gone from is vaguely identifying sites to absolutely no provision whatsoever, no national strategy for how to protect the housing rights of Roman gypsies and travellers. And all we have is trying to force people into houses. And I think we'd be seeing that a hell of a lot more if there were actually any houses to put Roman gypsies and travellers into. But as we are, you know, as we know, the, the homelessness register is huge. We've got 20,000 Roman gypsies and travellers uh, who are officially homeless in this country alone. Um, now, it's a shame that Owen Jones isn't here, actually, because I wanted to say a little bit about how I think <coughs> the racism that Romani gypsies and travellers face is actually very similar to a lot of what he discusses in his book, Chaps. Um, and it's, they're the same sorts of opinions about, you know, the Victorian poor that, you know, without repeating his argument here, you know, they're dirty, um, they steal things, they've got no morals, and they're just different from us. They're very different from us. And it's the same sort of demonization, obviously, as we get um, through a lot of the you know, bourgeois press about council house tenants uh, as well. Now, you know, I, I want to draw up these comparisons and make it clear that these are you know, intrinsically linked uh, in, in terms of the class struggle that we're talking about here. Um, but, and, and maybe, an, actually, as an aside, again, an interesting way to look at that is just in the transference of the word pikey from being a derogatory word about travellers to now be a word that's used about working class people generally. Um, but further to that, I think that there's a danger with travellers uh, and 
with the anti-racist movement in our discussion of what happens with Romani gypsies and travellers and new Roma, um, is that to say like, oh, that it's the most socially accepted form of racism and we've got to find something to do about it. And what, what people are thinking about then is, you know, verbal abuse on the street is, um, you know, a lot of the stuff that the anti-racist movement generally tries to combat uh, in our day-to-day -day workings. And that's, you know, the EDL, <coughs> people being against the BMP and, you know, people who are really, you know, very vocally and clearly being racist in their words. Um, now, I don't want to detract from that organising at all, and I'm also quite involved in it myself, I think it's key for the anti-racist movement. However, I think that a lot of us have an analysis of where racism comes from. There's a lot deeper than that. Most of us see, I think, on the left, where racism comes from as from economic crises, from unsustainable political and economic systems, and from things like housing crises. From a, from a lack of you know, socially affordable housing, these sorts of things. Unfortunately, a lot of our anti-racist movements find it very difficult, for obvious reasons, to confront those things. W what we can really confront is when people are saying racist things, but by that point, you know, it often feels like it's a bit too late. And we need to be, we need to be hitting the root a bit more. And that's why I want to argue that evictions, and evictions of travellers especially, uh, are a really key point for any anti-racist movement. Because actually, what you have in evictions is state-sponsored violence. Of the state actually destroying people's homes, taking away their access to all public services, you know, for people who, you know, heard a bit about the, um, about the eviction at Dale Farm, you know, there was huge amounts of verbal racism going on there as well, as well as, you know, travellers being beaten. Um, and actually, that's, that's something that we can actually fight to stop. That's something that we can confront in a way that we can't confront a lot of the government's more indirectly racist policies. Uh, and that's, I also, also think, that's, that's really where we can link up with a lot more, with a lot more people. Because evictions are going to become more commonplace, not just for travellers, but for working people throughout this country. And what we need to be building is, is the sort of network that can support people in preventing those evictions taking place. Uh, and, and really proclaiming the right of everyone to be able to have somewhere to live. Um, so just before I finish, I want to make a quick plug for a demonstration that we uh, are helping to co-organise uh, next Sunday, the 8th of April. Unfortunately, it's Easter Sunday this year, uh, but every 8th of April is Roman Nation Day. Uh, now, Roman Nation Day was instituted in 1971 by the uh, First <coughs> World Roman Congress. Um, and... What it, what we're, we're, as the Traveller Solidarity Network, kind of coordinating it internationally uh, with a number of other groups. So demonstrations in about 20 different countries worldwide. But there's a big demonstration happening in London that's going around visiting some of the embassies. Uh, it starts in High Park Corner and moves through the embassy district to visit those embassies that are of the countries most flagrantly abusing the rights of Roma. And unfortunately, I don't have time to go into the international situation here, but I'm sure, as many of you are aware, it's absolutely dire with the rise the far right and fascists in Hungary, Czech Republic, what's happening in France and Italy, etc. Um, and, and from doing that, uh, with a lot of the, these Roma communities that have themselves fled that persecution, uh, sections of the Bulgarian and, and Czech Roma communities in London, we're then going to travel to the Department for Communities and Local Government to protest against the localism bill. Uh, and we don't want that just to be um, you know, demonstrating against what it's doing to travellers. Uh, because we're, you know, we're all aware in the Traveller Solidarity Network of how this is affecting um, you know, people in social housing as well. So, yeah, really I'd, I'd urge people to, to see if they can come and get involved with that. You know, there will be smaller events happening around the country as well, uh, and it's, the time is you know, coming fast upon us. Um, but there's quite a lot of information about stuff, and you know, grab any of our <coughs> literature on the, on the table over there. We didn't get here early enough to put it out on the seats nicely. Um, yeah, but um, anyway, uh, hopefully people might be able to make it uh, next Sunday, so thanks a lot. Okay. <laughs>